So I was looking around on YouTube the other day when I saw this thumbnail by Antagma, and I thought, damn, that's nice. So in this unofficial second installment of me trying to emulate Houdini effects in Blender, we will create something similar. So let's get into it. First, let's add the base mesh that we will use to create the effect. I will use the Suzanne head, but you can use whatever mesh you want. Head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace, and press new to add a new node tree. Before getting into the setup, here's a brief outline of the steps we will take to create the final effect. First, we will install some lines inside the base mesh, then we will add some noise to the shape of the lines. After that, we will delete any points that end up outside of the base mesh, and convert the remaining lines to curves. We will then smooth out the curves by adjusting the handles of the curve control points. And finally, we will convert the curves back to a mesh, while also giving them thickness. So let's start by creating some lines. Add a distribute points on faces node, a mesh line node, and then instance some points node. Set the density max value to something like 100, then connect it to the point socket of the instance on points node. The density max determines the max amount of points per square meter, and depending on the size and shape of your base mesh, different values might look better. Change the mesh line from offset to end points. Set the count to 6, and set the end location C value to 0.5. This creates a mesh line of length 0.5 consisting of six vertices pointing straight up from the origin. The size of the object that you apply this effect to will greatly affect what value you should use as the endpoint C value, so keep that in mind. But for now, connect the mesh line to the instance socket. Right now, all the lines are pointing straight up, so let's fix that by adding an align Euler to vector node. Connect the normal of the distribute node to the vector socket of the align node, set the axis to C, then connect it to the rotation socket of the instance of points node. Here we use the normal vector of each point, which is outward facing direction of the face that the point is on, and pass it to the align node, which converts the vector to a rotation aligned along the selected axis. This rotation is then used as the rotation of the instance mesh lines. To make the lines point inwards instead of outwards, we just need to change the C scale of the instance of points node to negative 1, which reverses the direction of the vector. As a side note, I will set the factor of the align node to 0.5, since it adds some extra randomness to the final result. If you want even more randomness, you can even use a random value node as a factor. Now that we have the lines in place, let's distort them with a noise texture. First, however, we need to add a realized instances node. This node takes instance geometry and converts it to real geometry. The main difference between instanced and real geometry is that the instance geometry is just a copy of an original object, which means that any changes to the original object will also be applied to the instance geometry. Also, we can't manipulate the individual vertices of each mesh line in their instance state. Add a noise texture, a vector math node set to subtract, and a set position node. Connect the color socket of the noise texture node to the subtract node. Then connect that node to the offset socket of the set position node. You might have noticed that the entire mesh moved when we connected the subtract node, and that's because on average, the noise texture adds 0.5 to the positions on all axes. So to counteract that movement, set the values of the subtract node to 0.5. At this point, I suggest experimenting with the values of the noise texture. These are the values that I will use, but changing the scale and distortion can give widely different results that might work better with different base meshes. Next, we will remove any vertices that are outside of the original base mesh. We could probably use a boolean mesh node, but in my experience it never works the way I want, and the boolean operation is really heavy to perform. A much better approach, in my opinion, is to use a raycast node. So add a raycast node, a separate geometry node, and a normal node. Connect the geometry of the group input to the target socket. Then connect the isHit socket to the selection socket of the separate geometry node. Finally, connect the normal node to the ray direction socket. The normal node determines the directions that the ray should be cast, 
and we can use the is hit information to separate the points of the lines that are inside of the base mesh from the points that are outside of it. This way, we are only left with the part of the lines that are contained within the original mesh. Now that we have our noise displaced and trimmed mesh lines, it's time to make them less jagged. And we will do that by converting the lines to curves, which turns the vertices into control points with handles that we can manipulate. First, add a mesh to curve node. And a set spline type node. And set the spline type to Bessier. Bessier curve control points consist of three components. The control point itself, and two handles that can either be adjusted in parallel or individually. By changing the distance between the handles, we can modify the shape of the curve itself. To do this with geometry nodes, we need two set handle positions nodes connected like this, with the second handle positions node set to right. What we want to do is to adjust the handle positions so that we get the amount of smoothing of the curve that we want. Add a curve tangent node and a vector math node set to scale. The curve tangent node basically gives us the alignment of the control points along the curve, and we can then scale those values and use them as the new offset positions of the handles, with the result being both smoother and somewhat more chaotic curves. Once you're happy with the overall look of the curves, it's time to give the curves some thickness. Add a curve to mesh node, and a curve circle. Set the resolution of the curve circle to 6, and the radius to something small like 0.025. Then connect it to the profile curve socket of the curve to mesh node. To add some extra style, let's make the thickness of the curves go from thin to thick, then back to thin. An easy way to do this is to use the factor of a spline parameter node. This node returns a value between 0 and 1, where 0 is the starting point of the curve and 1 is the end point, regardless of what the actual length of the curve is. By connecting it to a float curve node, we can modify the factor value of the curve, essentially allowing us to create a custom profile for the curve thickness. We then connect the float curve node to a set curve radius node, which sets the radius, or thickness, of each curve in the connected geometry. Lastly, let's add a material to the mesh to make it look a bit more interesting. In the Materials tab, add a new material. Then add a set material node before the group output. And select the material in the dropdown. Then head over to the shading workspace. Also, make sure that you're using Cycles as a render engine. I will add some extra details to the mesh with the help of an ambient occlusion node. Set the samples of the ambient occlusion node to 8, then connect the AO socket to the base color of the principal BSDF. By changing the distance in the ambient occlusion node, we can adjust the amount of black that is visible. If you want some extra control, you can add a color ramp, and adjust the positions of the color stops. And you can even change the colors. And that's pretty much all there is to it. From here you can play around with whatever values in the node tree that you want, to see how it affects the final result. For example, what happens if you change the scale of the noise texture to 1.5? Or 5? How does the size and scale of the object affect the curves? I would also recommend increasing the density of the distribute points node to something like 500 before rendering. It might just be a personal preference, but I think the effect looks a lot better with more and denser curves. I hope you found this video helpful and that you learned something new. See you next time.